That story father told us yesterday was amazing. Didn't you think so? Which one? The story of Elijah the prophet? Yeah. Hey, by the way, is it father going to tell us the story of another prophet today? Hmm. Yes. He told us he'll tell us the story of prophet Amos today. Yes, Amos. I hope the story is going to be another great one. Come on, let's go to our class. It's story time. Yay! Come on, Matthew. The class is about to start. I'm coming. Good evening, kids. So, are you all ready for today's story? Yes, father. <laughs> All right. So like I told you yesterday, I'm going to tell you the story of Amos today. During the rule of Jeroboam II, Israel reached the peak of its glory. However, the prosperity was enjoyed only by the rich. The lives of vast majority of the poor were in misery. Heavy taxes and unfair interest on loans forced the poor to slavery. They were auctioned like animals in the slave market. The courts failed to execute justice, and not even the religious system was helpful to the poor. The Lord is my shepherd, nothing indeed shall I want. Though I pass through the valley of death, Huh? Ah, uh. Huh? Ah! Uh. Huh? Ah! Uh. Ah! It's dead. The Lord is with me. I fear no harm. The Lord is with me, I fear no harm. Whew, it's so hot today. Amos, Amos! Huh? Who's that? Amos, it's me, Eliphaz. Eliphaz, my friend. Hi, Amos. Eliphaz, good to see you. I heard you're doing well with your business. Hmm, I'm doing all right. Where are you coming from? We are coming from India. We bought some ivory and precious stones from India. Ivory? May I see that? I'm sorry. We sold all of them at Samaria. We stopped there on our way back and sold everything. Those people in Samaria bought everything we had at the price we named. <laughs> hmm. They must be very rich in Samaria. Certainly they are. Those Samarians, they don't know what to do with their wealth. And the women? Oh, their women are loaded with gold. Wow, they must be really rich. What? Who are they? Why are they tied in chains? Who? Oh, oh, them. They are the slaves we bought from Samaria. Slaves? Yes, we bought them for a very cheap price from Samaria. And we are going to sell them in Egypt. We will get a good price for them. <laughs> Slaves? But how could they? God gave freedom to everyone. You, what's your name? Huh? Me? Yes, you. 
Tell me your name. I, my name is Zara. Huh. And she's my wife, Miriam. Zira, how did you and your wife end up like this? Tell me, what happened? We, we are farmers from Jezreel. We are doing fine until last year when the crops failed. So? We couldn't pay the taxes, so borrowed some money from the landlord. But the next year, when we went to return the money, the landlord cheated us by saying that we had to pay double the amount in interest alone. Huh? How can the rich cheat poor farmers like that? That's not it, sir. They cheated people with the weights and measures also. What? Yes, sir. We had to give everything we had, but even that wasn't enough. They? They took our lands too. And then they took us to the slave market and and we were sold to them. We? We don't know what happened to our children. They? We don't know where they are. But, but how could someone do that to you? It's not just us, sir. Everybody here will have similar stories to tell you. I'm so sorry to hear that. Wait here. I will go and talk to your master. Amos, what are you doing there? I was talking to them. Talking to the slaves, huh? Eliphaz, listen my friend. Is it necessary that you sell them only in Egypt? We will sell them to anybody who can pay. Look, I have some gold and silver. And I also have these sheep and cattle. Can you take those and sell those people? Huh? So you are now interested in slave trading, huh? Slaves? They are my brothers. All right, calm down. I'll sell them to you. Two slaves for a cattle and one slave for a sheep. Is it a deal? It's a deal. I'll buy all of them. Here you are. Here, take these chains. No, I don't want the chains. I only want the people. Huh? But we won't be responsible if they run off. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. Master, we don't know who you are, but we will always be grateful to you. What do you want us to do, Master? No, don't call me that. I'm not your master. I'm an Israelite just like you. I am your brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Stand up. Listen everybody. You are no longer a slave to everybody. You are free to go anywhere. I will give you my land for yours to work. You can take that for free. <laughs> you are truly a great man. Amos freed the slaves he bought and he gave them his land. That night, how how could they sell their own brothers as slaves? Amos. Huh? Who was that? Amos. God, it's you? Amos, what do you see? A plumb line? I have measured my people, Israel, with a plumb line. Huh? They are not upright, so I'm going to knock them down. What shall I do? Go to Israel. I will instruct you there. The voice of God reached Amos like a roaring lion. Amos left for Israel the next day as God had instructed, but the sights that he saw on his way made him really angry. Help! Help! Shut up! Shut up, you poor little! <sighs> Stop! Stop it! 
What are you doing to him? Huh? Who are you? Mind your own business. He didn't pay his debts. So we are taking him as a slave. Lord, please help me. Amos could do nothing to help. So he walked away sadly. But he saw many other similar situations on his way to Israel. Stop it! Stop beating him! Oh! No! Please! No! Then why don't you pay his debts? Huh? You give me the money he owes me and I let him go. Do you have the money? I I don't have the money. Then go away, you fool. Don't waste my time. What is happening here? Hmm. Pour more. This is only 20 liters. Huh? Uh, but how could that be? I had brought 40 liters. Stop lying and bring me more oil. I... I think there's been a mistake. This scale is wrong. You are cheating me. How dare you? Take this. Ah! Is this the way you collect your debts? Who are you? Get out of here. Do you have different scales for measure? No. We use only one measure. Huh. Huh? Then what are these? Cheating with the scales? There are soldiers here too. No. You won't escape from the Lord with the help of your army. Huh? Go in peace, my friend. The God of Israel is with you. Excuse me, where are you all going? Oh, you didn't know? They have built a large temple in Bethel. And I've heard that the idol there, the golden calf, is really beautiful. Then why those animals? Oh, these are the sacrifices for the God. Can you please tell me how many slaves you have? I have around 150 of them. And I have around 200 slaves. You crush the poor, take their belongings, and now you're offering sacrifice to please God? What? No, look. Offering to God what is snatched from the poor is like killing a son before his father. Excuse me? I have been listening to your discussion. So, are you saying that we shouldn't offer sacrifices to the Lord? Your hands are stained with human blood. God will not be pleased with your sacrifices. How dare you? What are we supposed to do then? You must do justice. You must put an end to slavery. The poor have every right to live freely. You must let them go. In the end, God will judge you for what you do. What he says is the truth. Yes, he must be a prophet. How dare he talk about us like that? Yes, we must inform the chief priest about him. Some people realized that Amos was speaking the truth and they knew that he was a prophet. But some were not quite happy with what he was saying. One day, Amos went to the slave market in Samaria. Here is youth of 20. The bidding starts at 50 shekels. 55 shekels! 60 shekels. Sold for 60 shekels. Here, two healthy boys. Bidding starts at 10 shekels for both. 15 shekels. 20. Stop it. Huh? Who's that? How dare you enslave the people who God had liberated. What? How dare you? Stop the slave trade. Stop. Stop this lunatic! Soldiers! Soldiers, stop them! But before they could do anything, the slaves had escaped. They returned to their homeland. That afternoon, one man who escaped from the slave market reached his village. Paris, it's you! Ha ha ha! Hello, my friend! Oh, it's so good to see you! Paris, did they let you go? 
a prophet. A prophet from Judah came to the slave market and created a riot there. Prophet from Judah? What did he do? He said that the children of Israel are not to be enslaved. Huh. Thank God that there's someone talking for us. Yes, it was the Lord who freed us. We walked home. Hmm. The taxes and the interests. The rich are exploiting us. We can't go on feeding them like this. Huh? Is that? Is that? What is it? It's him. The prophet. The prophet who freed you? Yes. Let's go to him. Master. Master. Who are you? I was in the slave market today morning and you freed me. It's your right to be free. God has liberated you. But I'm afraid now. What if the soldiers come searching for us? Fear no more. We have the law of the Lord to rule this country. The king and the rich have taken the law into their hands. No. The Lord is the king of Israel. Then what about Jeroboam? He he is an imposter who got into power by cheating people. But but the priest and the elders are on his side. Don't worry my brother. All of them have joined their hands in exploiting the poor, but their days are numbered. In the meantime, the landlords and other rich men were getting real upset about what was going on. Nobody, nobody's willing to repay the debts these days. They are saying that the interest is too high. <sighs> Even the tenants are refusing to pay the rent. We must use all our force to suppress him. But why is this happening now? I mean, it was all going very well till a few days ago. It's because of that man. Who? That Amos from Tekoa. He claims to be a prophet. Huh? He wants to free all the slaves, ban all worship and topple the government. What? He's pretending to be the leader of the poor and he's teaching that God is on their side. He is jealous because we are living well. <laughs> We can't let him go on like this. We must do something immediately. People were getting upset about what Amos was preaching to people. And one day, Amos was going by a court in Samaria when he stopped by to listen to a hearing. My lord, this man owes me a thousand shekels, but he is refusing to pay now. Your honor, I borrowed only 50 shekels. And when I went to repay him, he started lying. I don't know what to do now. Your Honor, may I speak to you for a moment in private? Hmm. Come here. Listen, if you can give a verdict in my favor, then I will give you 300 shekels. Please, my Honor, give us justice. He is lying. Please, please don't listen to him. Silence! The landlord is right. The accused must pay 1,000 shekels immediately. If he doesn't pay, then confiscate his land, sell his wife and children, and auction him at the slave market by tomorrow. No! Please don't! Guards, take him away! No! He is lying! Please help! Stop it! Who is it? You call yourself a judge of Israel? Who are you to question me? You, you accept bribes and punish the poor. You sentence the innocent to slavery. Order! Order the court! This isn't a court. You are robbers and murderers, not the judges. It is God who speaks. I have heard the cries of the poor. No one will escape my judgment. Shut up! If you open your mouth again, then I will shut it down forever. If you don't listen to the cries of the poor, then you will be the ones crying tomorrow. Gods, take him away! And the next day, Amos went to the temple where the priests were offering sacrifices. Oh God Almighty, please accept the sacrifice and shower your blessings upon us. Amen! Amen! Give us wealth and prosperity. Give us 
Stop your chanting. Huh? Who are you? Now listen to these words of God. I hate and despise your feasts and festivals. I hate your offerings. But but God has asked us to offer the sacrifices. Go away with your offerings. Never step into this temple again. How dare you? This is the royal temple. You have set up idols against my command. Take them away from my presence. You endure slavery, encourage corruption, and you worship idols. Amos, watch your mouth. I won't tolerate this arrogance. Let justice roll down like waters, integrity like an unfailing stream. God says, your wife shall be forced to go to the streets. Your children will fall by the sword. The people of Israel will be sent into exile because of you. You will die in a foreign land. God holds a plumbing line over Israel. No one shall escape. The king, the priests, and all the judges will be banished. Gods, arrest him. The wrath of God is coming down upon you like a roaring flame. Shut up. Where is your God now? <laughs> Take him to the prison. Let justice roll down. But Amos' call for justice fell on deaf ears. He was imprisoned and tortured for telling the God's word to the people. Wow, that's such an amazing story, Father. Those rich people in Israel had become so cruel. Yes, Lucy. They ignored God's commandments and led their lives as they desired. His words are like a lion's roar, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, Matthew. Now, shall I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, Father. Where was Amos from? Amos was from a small village called Tekoa. Correct. And what was his profession? He was a shepherd. Very good, Matthew. Now, tell me why he was mad at the judges. He was mad because they were taking bribes to punish the innocent. Correct. That's all for today. Now, I want you all to memorize these quote. Can you? Yes, Father. Let justice roll down like waters. Integrity like an unfailing stream. Now repeat with me. Let, Let justice roll down like waters. Integrity, integrity like an unfailing stream. stream. Very good, everyone. We'll meet tomorrow with a new story. Which story are you going to tell us tomorrow, Father? I'm telling you the story of Hosea. The story of a man who experienced the pain of loving as God did. See you again. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father. Good morning, kids. Good morning, Father. Hmm. Before I begin, I want to ask you something. Have you heard about the Ten Commandments? Uh, what is that? Have you heard about that, Matthew? I, I... That's all right. Do you know about the Ten Commandments, George? It is the ten laws that God gave Moses for people to follow. Hmm, very good. That's correct. So children, we are going to learn today about the Ten Commandments. I'm going to tell you the story of how God gave these commandments to Moses. Shall I start? The Hebrews who reached Egypt with Joseph enjoyed freedom and prosperity till the middle of 16th century. But with the emergence of a new dynasty, they were subjected to cruel slavery and torture. There were so many Hebrew slaves, and the Pharaoh feared they might start a rebellion against them. These Hebrews! These children of Israel, 
I don't like them. Yes, Your Majesty. They are terrible people. They are not like us. There are too many of them. They could start their own army. They could one day rebel against us. Yes, my lord. They could do that. I have tried everything, overloading them with work so that they'll drop and die, doubling their taxes, everything. I must not let them grow in numbers anymore. Yes, my lord. We must not let their population grow. I must break their will this time. Break their hearts and bring them down this time. Yes, we must bring them down. Summon the gods. Go out and take every Hebrew baby and throw them into the Nile. Yes, my lord. We must throw. Uh, what? But my lord, the babies? Yes, the babies. These Hebrews must fear me. They should understand that I am their God. Now go and inform this to the commander and others. Yes, your majesty. Commander, commander. Ha 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 ha. They shall now worship me. <sighs> go away. My child, don't take him. Don't take him, please. <sighs> Go away. <laughs> there were cries everywhere, and it was now time. God was about to intervene and help the sons of Israel. But one mother was not willing to let her son die. My son will live. Mother, are you going to float him in the river? We have no other option if your brother has to survive. Then this is the only way. May God guide you, my son. Nobody is going to hurt my baby brother. The basket floated for many hours and finally stopped near the Pharaoh's palace. And the basket was spotted by Pharaoh's daughter. Huh? What is that? Maid, bring me that basket. It's a Hebrew child, Princess. We must throw him back into the river. What? Kill this innocent baby? No! I will not let this child get killed. I will bring him up as my own son. He will be a prince over all men. Because he was drawn from water. His name shall be Moses. destined for great things, Moses. I feel it in my heart, my son. Moses grew up in the palace like a prince. Moses, along with Pharaoh's son, Ramesses, learned the scriptures together. He also learned to fight like a prince. On his 21st birthday, Pharaoh invited Moses to his palace to celebrate. Moses, I am so happy for you. Thank you so much. Here is your birthday gift. From now on, you will be in charge of all the Hebrew slaves in our kingdom. No. Are you happy? I am. I am so grateful. Get up. Get up. You are my son, Moses. Oh. No, please don't. Huh? Huh? 
Shut up. Shut up, you lazy fool. No! Please stop! Do you think you can get away with this acting? Stand up! Please! What? What's going on here? Who are you to ask? Get away, you! I told you to stop! Oh! How dare you! I am going to teach you a lesson! Ugh. Uh. Uh. Oh no! What have I done? Oh no! Moses! 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 Who are you? You... You look like me. I am Aaron, son of your nurse. So? She's not your nurse, Moses. She's your mother. What? But... But I'm the prince of Egypt. Uh... Moses? Don't you remember the basket? The blanket that mother gave you? I... I... Uh, yes. Don't you remember your sister, Miriam? Miriam? Miriam is my sister? Yes, Moses. Don't you remember anything? I... I... I have dreamt of those, but I never believed they were real. They are real, Moses, and I'm your brother, Aaron. My brother, my brother. Moses, we all love you, Moses. But now, you must ride for your life. No, I'm a prince of Egypt. I don't have to run anywhere. Take this donkey and flee while you still can. What about you, Miriam, my family? We will survive. We always have. And we, we always will. Get on the donkey and leave now. Yes, master. They will come and kill you. Please leave now. But, but... Trust me, Moses. They are here now, Moses. We will see each other again, Moses. I know it. I feel it. Moses walked for many days in the desert without food and water. He wandered aimlessly. I'm sorry, donkey. I hope we'll find some place to get water soon. What? Where are you going? Stop! What's that? You have saved us. Get away. No! We got here first. Our goats are thirsty. Boo aside, I said. Stop him! You. Ah! Uh. Stop it! The women were here first. You can either fight with me or stand for your turn. Who do you think you are? Let's teach him a lesson. Here. Uh. 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 
You still want to fight? Run! Run! Are you all right? Yes, we are. Thank you so much. Can I get some water? Of course. Here. Thank you. Drink well, my friend. What's your name? Uh, Moses. I am Zipporah, daughter of the head priest Jethro. Are you a Hebrew? No. Yes, I'm a Hebrew. I'm just a stranger in a strange land. Please come with us. My father will want to thank you for saving us. Okay, I will call. Moses married Zipporah and settled in the land of Midian. He looked after the flocks of Jethro. Moses had two sons, and he was very happy and content with his life. I'm leaving, dear. I will be back by evening. Don't go too far. All right, woman. <laughs> but in Egypt, the children of Israel were being tortured. They were treated very badly and their cries came up to God. God chose Moses to help Abraham's descendants. Hey you little one, you have had enough to eat? <laughs> oh, I think it's time to leave. Come on everyone, come here. Hey, come here, don't go there, stop. You, be careful. Come here. What is that? I have never seen anything like that before. A fire that doesn't burn the bush. And when he reached near that bush, God spoke to him. Moses. Huh? Moses. Moses. Ah, I'm here. I am. I'm right here. Take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. I. I have taken off my shoes. I am Yehovah, God of Israel. I am the God of your forefathers, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. I have seen the condition of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cries. I mean to deliver them out of the hands of Egyptians and bring them to the land that was promised to their fathers. I will send you, Moses, to free them, and you will bring my people to serve me upon this mountain. Who am I, Lord, to do this? If I go back to Egypt and say that I was sent by God, nobody would believe me. What do I tell them? Give the people my message, and they will follow you out of Egypt to this mountain, and then you will lead them to their true home, a land that will flow with milk and honey for them all. Do not be afraid. Do as I've instructed Moses and I will be with you. And following God's instructions, Moses left his home, his wife and children. Do you really have to go? God has spoken. I must go. But, but you were really happy here. No, dear. I'm sorry to say this, but I wasn't really happy staying here. How could I be happy knowing that my people were being crushed in Egypt? But, but... We have talked about this. I have to go. Father, don't go. Come on, son. I have told you. I'm following God's instructions. Will we ever see you again? Of course, son. 
You must have faith. We will wait for you, Moses. We will wait. Bye, Father. Bye, son. We have made it. We are here. We made it here, my friend. Ah, come on, donkey. Let's sit here for some time. Here, drink some water. Moses? Who? Aaron. <laughs> my brother. Moses, you're here. Brother! Miriam? Miriam, my sister. <laughs> Baby brother? I knew we would meet again someday. But how did you know that I'll be coming? I had a dream. God told me to meet you here. It was no dream, brother. We have to do as he has commanded. The situation here has worsened, Moses. What happened, brother? The king died last year, and now his son Remesis is ruling. He's ruthless, arrogant, and a slave master. He's torturing our people. Our sufferings have grown tenfold under him, Moses. Mm, all our troubles are going to end soon. We will go and see Pharaoh tomorrow. Remesis? Yes, I haven't seen him in years. Yes, we will. Let's go to our home now. I told our people that you would be coming. I told them about the land that God promised them. Aaron, I'm glad you are with me. We are going to need all the help that we can get. I will always be by your side, Moses. Thank you, my brother. You'll be staying with us, little brother. Take good rest. You have much to do tomorrow. Moses, Moses the murderer, Moses the coward. Remesis, I come on urgent business. I come as a representative of God. Representative of God, huh? Ha ha ha. And what does he have to say? God has spoken to me. The Lord God of Israel says, let my people go. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Oh Moses, you expect me to just let the Hebrews leave? Just like that? Because of a God who I haven't heard of wants me to? You should mind your own business and get out of here. You are pathetic in my eyes. You are a fraud. I am the God of Egypt. Show him. It's time. Behold the power of the Lord God. Don't worry, son. It's just a trick. Bring our magicians. Yes, master. Oh, a snake, is it? Here you go. Huh? Ha 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 ha. See two snakes. Even our magicians can outdo your so-called god. Our magicians are better. 
Hey, look! His snake is eating ours! Huh? Father? Cure me, Pharaoh. Let my people go. Tell your god that Pharaoh will not release his slaves. No! Tell your god that I'll increase their work. I will no longer give them straw to make their bricks. They will have to find their own straw. Tell your god that. You are going to suffer for this. That's enough for today, children. I will tell you the rest of the story tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Father. Father John is going to tell us the story of Saul today. Yay! Haha, -ha, you're so excited, Matthew. Yes, he is going to tell us the story of Saul, the first king of Israel. Let's sit here and wait for Father. There he comes. <laughs> Hello, Jimmy. Good evening, everyone. So, children, which story did I tell you yesterday? You told us the story of Prophet Samuel. All right. And today, I'm going to tell you the story of Saul. Are you ready? Yes, Father. We are. Saul was anointed as the king at a very critical moment in the history of Israel. Philistines were very powerful and they were taking away the land that God had promised Israelites. The very existence of Israel was threatened. Israel, listen, it is God who speaks. I shall anoint a king for you. But remember this, he shall make the mighty men among you as his soldiers and servants, and your daughters will be his wives and maids. He will take over your land. He will reduce you to slavery. There will be no point in seeking help from God after this. What do you say? We don't worry about that, but today we want a king. Yes, what we need is a king. All right then, you shall have a king within 30 days from today. Gather all the Israelites at Mizpah on that day. In the hill country of Judea, there was a little town called Gaibe. In that town lived a man named Kish who belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. One day, some of his donkeys got lost. He sent his son, Saul, along with a servant in search of the donkeys. This happened a few days after Samuel promised the Israelites that he would give them a king. <sighs> I am tired. Let's search for some more time. Master, forget the donkeys. Let's return back home. They must be worried thinking about us. Won't it be a shame to return empty-handed? I've heard that there is a prophet around here. Let's go and talk to him. Yes, master. Come, maybe he can help us in finding the donkeys. Hey, look, there's someone there. Let's go and ask him. Hey, hello, sir. Yes, how can I help you? Sir, we heard that there is a prophet around here. Do you know him? Oh, did you mean the prophet Samuel? Yes. He is in town. You may find him on top of this mountain. Thank you, sir. Come, 
Let's get to the top of this mountain. <sighs> Have we reached, Master? <sighs> Yes, we have reached the top. Oh, there's someone over there. Let's go and ask him. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Could you please help us find Prophet Samuel? We are coming from Gaibe. I am Samuel. Did you... Did you just say that you are coming from Gaibe? Yes, we are from Gaibe. And is your name Saul? Whoa! Yes, my name is Saul. But how did you know? God, it's like you told me in my vision. Thank you, God. Master, we come in search for our donkeys. They were lost a few days back. Don't worry about the donkeys anymore. They have been found. Come with me. You can stay with me tonight. Yes, Master. Samuel had a vision about Saul the night before. And when he saw Saul, he knew that he was the chosen one by God to be the king of Israel. Saul stayed with Samuel that night and they were about to return back home the next morning. Saul? Saul, wait there. Yes, master? Saul? I want to show you something. Tell your servant to go on without us. You go ahead. I'll join you in some time. What is it, Master? Why did you want me to stay? Kneel down, Saul. Yes, Master. Saul, God has anointed you to be the king of Israel. You will save God's people from their enemies. Master? I... I don't think I'm worthy. I come from a humble family. It doesn't matter. You will know it's true because on your way, you will find three men. Huh? One of them will be carrying three lambs. The second will be carrying three loaves of bread. And the third will be carrying a wineskin with him. And as you reach Mount Gaibe, the prophets will come out playing music and they will be chanting. The Spirit of the Lord will seize you at that moment. What? What am I supposed to do then? Don't worry. Do what you may at that moment. Like Samuel had foretold, Saul met with the men on his way. And when he reached Mount Gaibe, he saw the prophets coming down chanting and playing music. Ah, oh, it's just like he told me. And now the prophets too. When Saul saw the prophets, the Spirit of the Lord came over him. And he was transformed into a new man. Hallelujah! 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 Hey! Hey, isn't he the son of Kish? Yes, he is. But what happened to him? I think the Spirit of Lord has come over him. Is Paul one of the prophets too? Looks like he's one too. Hallelujah! The people of Israel gathered at Mount Mizbah as Samuel had directed them. They were waiting eagerly to meet their new king. People of Israel, you have elected Saul, son of Kish, from the tribe of Benjamin, as your king. Saul, son of Kish, long live the king! Long live the king! Saul, God has chosen you to protect Israelites from the enemy. You should always remember 
to be just and kind and be like a father to them i will master you should also care for the poor and you should not accumulate wealth do not build palaces for your own use i will never forget your words master i will never forget what you have done for me thank you so much after saul was anointed as the king he returned home and started working in the field as usual after about a month two men came to meet him my king huh who are you we are coming from the north from a town called jabesh gilead what do you want why have you come here my king the ammonites have surrounded our town we surrendered and begged for a treaty and they agreed if they have agreed to your treaty then why have you come here my lord they are crazy people do you want to know the terms of the treaty hmm they want to pluck out the right eye of all our residents huh and we have got only 7 days to give them an answer if we don't agree then they will attack the town and kill everyone is that so hmm please save us my lord we have got nowhere else to go don't worry i will take care of this you can return to your town now god will look after you thanks my lord Saul assembled a huge army by threatening the people of Israel and a huge crowd came to march with him. Listen everyone. Jabesh Gilead is under siege and the Ammonites are going to kill everyone in town. We must attack them and protect our people. Yay! Yay! Get ready to attack as soon as you hear the trumpet blowing. Yeah! Yay! Attack! Under the leadership of Saul, the Israelites attacked the Ammonites and they won the war in a very short time. <laughs> We have won. Long live King Saul. Praise the Lord who gave us a king. We now have a king. Nobody will dare to attack us now. <laughs> Where is my son? Jonathan Jonathan Where are you Jonathan? I'm here father. Put me down please. Why did he call me father? Jonathan, I need you to go to Gilgal for a sacrifice. I want you to move to Gibe with a thousand men. The rest of the army will come with me to Gilgal. Gibe, but you know that the Philistine fortress is on the way. What if they attack? Then you must take a different route. After my sacrifice at Gilgal, I'll come and join you. All right, father. I will do as you have told me. You take care, my son. Saul arrived in Gilgal and waited for Samuel to arrive to begin the sacrifice. Saul's son Jonathan had reached Gibe. Master, we have been waiting for 7 days. Can't we offer the sacrifice and continue with our journey? No. It must be Prophet Samuel who's offering the sacrifice. Lord, Lord. Huh? Who is it? Huh. <sighs> Who are you? My lord, I was in Gibe with your son. And 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 what what happened? And the Philistines attacked us. Huh? Is my son all right? Tell me. Is Jonathan all right? Yes my lord he's safe for now we won at gaibe but but tell me what happened all the philistines have joined forces and they're planning to attack again huh they might attack any time now we must stay here any longer my lord the philistines will attack our children hmm there is no time to waste my lord We must act quickly. Bring the offerings for the sacrifice. I will do the sacrifice myself. Get them quick. Yes, my lord.
Saul's son Jonathan was stuck in Gaibe with Philistines waiting to attack his army. Saul wanted to raise there as quickly possible, so he decided to start offering the sacrifice himself. Huh? Is he offering the sacrifice? Samuel raised the temple while Saul was offering the sacrifice, and he got very, very angry. Stop it! Huh? Stop it! I said. What are you trying to do? I, I. Are you trying to snatch the priesthood also? What right do you have to offer the sacrifice? I'm sorry, Master. I was waiting for you for so many days, and I just got the news that my son Jonathan is in trouble. The Philistines can attack Gaibe any time. So, you thought you could offer the sacrifice yourself? You couldn't wait for me. I'm truly sorry, but if we delayed any longer, my son might get killed. Huh? You and your soldiers? Did you forget that it is God who leads Israel in war? Master, please do not misunderstand me. I offer the sacrifice to implore God's help. Don't you know that obedience is better than sacrifice? What obedience are you talking about? Is it my fault that you are late? What? No arrogance, too. God is going to take away your kingship. King, king. What is it? Many of our soldiers are deserting us. What? But why? They think that you will not be able to lead them. Huh? You can do whatever you want. I am leaving. Why are you punishing me, master? You know. What your mistake was? You did not wait. You are not obedient, Master. Please, don't touch me. God has chosen another one to be the king. Master, please forgive me. Please, Master, forgive me. Samuel was very depressed with what had happened at the temple. He couldn't stop thinking about it at all. What wrong did I do? I have loved and respected Samuel more than my father. Why is he being so cruel to me? How could I have waited any longer when my son's life was in danger? Am I thinking this way because I do not trust in God? Did I offend him by offering the sacrifice? Saul defeated the Philistines in Gibe and saved Jonathan, but. Saul became victim to a maniac depression. He could never get over to what had happened at the temple of Gilgal. Master, I have brought you the wine you asked. Hmm. What is this? It tastes like blood. Master, this is the best wine in all of Israel. How dare you call me your master? I am Saul, and I'm looking for father's donkey. Donkey? I'm I'm sorry, master. Where are my donkeys? I have been looking them for so long. What is he talking about? I don't know, but something is seriously wrong. I think he is possessed by a ghost. Yes. He could be possessed. It is neither ghost nor devil. It's his own fear. Don't you remember? It started in Gilgal when he broke up with Prophet Samuel. Ah, yes. He has been like this for so long now. I hope he gets back to his senses soon. Huh? Who is this? Samuel, it's you. Stop strangling me. I'm going to kill you. Ah! <sighs> What just happened? It was just a dream. 
Saul's trouble increased every day. The people around him brought a musician thinking that music will comfort him. And they invited David, a great musician, to comfort Saul. But this musician, David, went on to become the next king of Israel. Wow! Did he really go crazy, father? Yes, Lucy. Saul's mind was troubled with what had happened and he could never recover from it. Did his son die in the battle, father? No, he didn't. Saul's son Jonathan survived and he became a great friend of David. Father, was Saul really a bad person? Hmm, no, my dear. In fact, Saul more or less had a preparatory role, like John the Baptist. John the Baptist had made way for Jesus, and in the same way, Saul prepared the way for David. Hmm, I think his breakup with Samuel changed him as a person. You are correct. When Samuel left him, his spirits were crushed, and he fell victim to depression and jealousy. He could no longer distinguish between friends and foes, and he ended up killing many innocent people. So, shall I start with my questions then? Who can tell me which tribe Saul belonged to? Me, me. <laughs> yes, Matthew. Saul belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. Correct, Matthew. Why did Israelites demand a king? Israelites wanted an army to defend themselves and they demanded a king so that he can command the army. And who were the enemies of Israel? The Philistines, father. Good. Now who appointed Saul as the king of Israel? It was prophet Samuel. Correct. And what was Saul's profession before he became a king? He was a farmer. And what was his father's name? Mm, his father's name was Kish. Good, Matthew. Now who can tell me why Samuel got angry with Saul? Saul was waiting for Samuel at Gilgal to offer a sacrifice. But while waiting, he got the news that his son was about to be attacked by the Philistines. So in order to save his son, he had to reach there quickly and he decided to offer the sacrifice himself without waiting for Samuel. And when Samuel saw Saul offering the sacrifice, he got really angry. Samuel also told him that another person was chosen by God to be the king of Israel. This troubled Saul's mind for a long time and he fell into a depression. <laughs> Very good, both of you. So that's it, children. We'll meet again tomorrow then. Father, are you going to tell us the story of King David tomorrow? Hmm. Before I tell you the story of King David, I'll tell you the story of David, the shepherd. Is he the one who defeated the giant Goliath, Father? Yes, Lucy. David killed a giant named Goliath and defeated the Philistine army. Wow, it's going to be wonderful. We will meet tomorrow at the same time. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Wow, it's so beautiful. What is it, Jimmy? Jimmy? Oh, don't worry. He must be playing with a fly or something. Shut up, Jimmy. Huh? What is it, Jimmy? What's over there? He must be playing with you, Lucy. All right, all right. I'll come with you. Are you coming, George? No, no. He's playing with you. You go ahead and take a look. I'm just gonna lie down here. Hey, Jimmy, stop. What's in here? Huh? It's a kitten. Shh. 
She's so cute. You look so tired. Didn't you eat, you poor little thing? Where's your mother? It seems she's lost. Let me call Matthew and George. George, Matthew, come over here. Huh? Isn't that Lucy? Matthew, Matthew, stand up. George, Matthew. Huh? It's Lucy. Why is she calling us? Come on, Matthew. Let's go. She could be in some trouble. Huh? Coming, Lucy. <sighs> what happened, Lucy? Hey, guys. Look what I found. Wow. She is... She is so beautiful. Isn't she? I found her in these bushes. She is alone and I couldn't find her mother anywhere. She looks so weak. Maybe her mother has gone out to fetch some food. Can I hold her, Lucy, please? Mm. All right, here. Come here. Oh, you poor thing. Are you hungry? Where is your mama? Hello, kids. Father John. What's going on here? We found a kitten by the bush, Father. We are waiting for her mother to come back. This one looks so weak. I don't think she has eaten anything in days. George, go and get some milk. Quick. Yes, Father. Hmm. Let's wait for her mother to come back till evening. And what if something happened to her mother? What if she doesn't come back? Then we will take care of her, Matthew. Don't worry. I've got the milk. Very good. Now keep it down there. All right. Let's sit here for some time. Father, can you tell us a story while we wait here for his mother? That's a great idea, Lucy. Now which story do you want me to tell you? You told us yesterday that you tell us the story of Prophet Jeremiah today. Ah, yes. Now listen carefully. In the little village of Anathoth, not very far from Jerusalem, a boy named Jeremiah was learning his lessons. Since Jeremiah was the son of a priest, he had more difficult lessons to learn and less time to play. But Jeremiah was quick to learn. He knew all about the history of Israel and how God had helped by leading them. As Jeremiah grew, he became bigger and stronger. His heart was filled with the love for his country and with the love of God. One day, as he was walking in his fields, Jeremiah, huh? I'm going to bind you as the prophet of the nations. Huh? But Lord God, I'm too young. I do not know how to speak. Do not say that you are too young. You must go where I send you and say what I command you. I'm putting my words in your mouth. I will, Lord. Jeremiah, what do you see? I, I see a branch of an almond tree. And I see a cooking pot tilting from the north. In his vision, like the white flowers in the almond tree that was awake while everything else was dead, God said that he would fulfill every one of his words. Jeremiah, I watch over my words to see it fulfilled. And like the tilting pot, disaster is boiling from the north to destroy your land. Huh? Do not be afraid. I will make you strong. You will be like a fortified city. God told Jeremiah that evil days were coming upon his country. He told him that armies would come sweeping down from the north and would destroy Jerusalem and take the Israelites captive. This was the message which Jeremiah was supposed to deliver to the people. The message that God was about to punish the Israelites for their wrongdoings. And no better messenger could have been chosen. Jeremiah was quite fearless and steadfast like a rock. 
nothing could stop him or tempt him to keep silence. Listen, O Israel, to the word of God. You have abandoned our God. Your prophet speaks in the name of idols. Your priests offer sacrifices to these idols. Your hands are stained with the blood of the innocent. Isn't this Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, the priest? Ah, yes, he is. Where was he all these days? Looks like he's sick. He is pretending to be a prophet. A prophet? No, not another one. We have enough of them already. Come back to God. He is merciful. Abandon your idols and do justice. Jeremiah, you better watch what you're saying. Are you trying to be a prophet? Jeremiah, my son, why don't you be a priest like your father? What you're doing is quite dangerous. I am only obeying our God, and I think you should do the same. Hmm. At first, however, things were easy for the young prophet. The good king Josiah was reigning, and he tried to make the people give up idol worship. King Josiah gave instructions to destroy the idols in the country. Altars and temples dedicated to idols were destroyed. From now on, Israel will have only one temple. Sacrifices will be offered only in Jerusalem. Idol worship will now be considered a crime deserving capital punishment. Hmm. Josiah is a smart king. We are becoming an empire like in the times of David. It won't be long before Solomon's glory returns to Israel. Yes, all the prophets are saying the same too. No, not every prophet agrees. Jeremiah is still preaching about the coming disaster. <laughs> he is a fool. But the good days didn't last for long. In a few days, there was a war at Megiddo against Egyptians, and Josiah died fighting a furious battle. Oh no! He was such a good king. Yes, he took care of his people very well. Hmm, maybe, maybe he was punished by the Egyptian gods for destroying their idols. What? Hmm, you're right. Maybe we should worship Baal from now on. Hey, look! Isn't that Jeremiah walking up the stairs? Yes, it's Jeremiah. What is he going to do? People of Israel, God is punishing you for your sins. But Josiah was a good king. He destroyed all the idols. True faith means not just destroying the idols. It means writing the laws of the covenant in your heart. But, but we offer sacrifices as commanded by the God. Your sacrifices are in vain. No one will be able to save you. Move! Mm. Move aside! People of Israel, do not believe in empty promises. Who are you? How dare you speak like that in the house of the Lord? Yes, this is the house of the Lord. God will protect his house. You steal, murder, and commit other crimes. Then come to the house of the Lord. Do you think you'll be safe here? What is this place? A den of robbers? Huh? How dare you? Where are the guards? Yes, master. Arrest this man. He's speaking against our temple and our God. Take him away. Come with me, you. Jeremiah was arrested that day, and he was produced before the judges. The judges sent him away with an order forbidding him to enter the temple ever. Jeremiah left the city that day and lived in exile for many years. In the meantime, Israel was attacked by King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Israel became the servant of Babylon and they were forced to pay heavy taxes. Even Jeremiah, he was exiled. He continued to write his message which he could no longer cry out loud. Write this Baruch. It is not truth, but it's hypocrisy going in Israel. 
corruption is increasing day by day, and the people have forgotten their Lord. Master, are these the words of the Lord? Hmm. Yes. Unfortunately, yes. His words are so terrible. Will the people accept his message? I don't know, Baruch. I hope they listen to his message. Huh? You have written down everything the Lord has told me. Tomorrow's the day of fasting. Since I'm not allowed to enter the temple, you must go and read the scroll before all people. But Master, they will arrest me if I read this before them. Don't worry, my son. The Lord will protect you. I... I... All right, Master. I will do as you have told. As Jeremiah had instructed, Baruch went to the temple next day and read the message from God to all the people. And the priests have become two. I will not accept any sacrifices from you. Your nation will be destroyed. Huh? No, it can't be true. But before Baru could finish reading from the scroll, the officials of the king came and arrested him. Your people will become slaves. And you... Baruch, stop it. You must come with me to the king. Huh? God, take the scroll with him. Baruch was taken to the king, and the priest read out the message from the scroll. And because of this, your city will be destroyed. Huh? Your temple will be destroyed. Your people will become slaves again. What? How dare he? Give me that scroll. Here, my lord. Ugh. Ugh. Word of God, huh? Ugh. Arrest him and send him to the prison. I'll show him who the real God is. Ugh. No. No. Please. Baruch was arrested that day, and the king gave strict orders prohibiting Jeremiah to enter the city. Jeremiah, in the meantime, received another message from God. He went to the valley of Ben-Hinnom and carried a jar along with him. This is the valley where you sacrificed innocent babies to idols. This place will hereafter be called as the Valley of Slaughter. Huh? Oh no! Father, is it true? Is the God going to punish us? But there among the crowd was Pashur, the chief priest. He got infuriated by Jeremiah's words, and he went upon him and struck him. I will put an end to your prophecies today. Here! Ah! Gods! Take him to the palace! Jeremiah was taken to the palace and was beaten the whole night. Ugh! Ugh! Ah! You... You and your friends will become slaves to the king of Babylon. Jerusalem will be reduced to ashes. Ah, ah. Ha! You are a fool. And after a few days, Jeremiah got another message from God. Jeremiah, make a yoke of wood. Put it on your neck and go to the king, Zerekiah. Yes, my lord. God told Jeremiah that the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, was his loyal servant. He was using the king to destroy Israel and its people. Jeremiah was upset hearing the news, and he decided to go and deliver the message anyways. The next day there was a meeting at the palace. King Zedekiah had invited neighboring countries to unite and fight against Nebuchadnezzar. We must unite and fight against Babylon. Yes, Babylon will fall if stand together. Wait, who is that? 
Isn't that Jeremiah, the prophet? <sighs> <sighs> what are you doing? How dare you enter the palace? I... I came here to deliver the word of God. I have handed over all your countries to my servant, Nebuchadnezzar. If you refuse to obey him and bend to his yoke, then your kingdom will be destroyed. How dare you! We are going to break the yoke of Babylon like this! Ha! Huh. You broke the wooden yoke. The Lord will place an iron yoke over your shoulder and you will die in a foreign land. Wait! I think we must listen to him. No, my king. He's just a mad person. Look at him. Does he look like a prophet to you? Don't worry. I'm going to take care of him. Guards, arrest him and throw him in the pit. Huh? Nobody believed Jeremiah. They arrested him and threw him in a well in the courtyard. The well was a horrible place. There was not enough water in the well, but there was deep, wet mud at the bottom into which he kept sinking. You and your prophecies will end in this well. And they left him there without food to die. Why was I ever born? Why should I live at all like this? Hated and despised by everyone. Lord, your word was my delight. It was sweet as honey, and I proclaimed it with joy. Why is it that you have abandoned me now? Jeremiah. Huh? God? Jeremiah, you speak only noble words. You shall be as my own mouth. Mm. Thank you, God. That night, Jeremiah, who had sung waist deep, was saved by a servant of the king. Master, master. Huh. Who are you? Shh. Be silent, master. I've come to save you. Tie this rope below your arms. I will lift you up, master. The servant pulled out Jeremiah from the well and saved his life. Thank you, my son. May God bless you. Thank you, master. We mustn't stay here any longer. Come, let's get out of here. Heeding the advice of priests and his ministers, King Zedekiah stopped paying tribute to Nebuchadnezzar. And as Jeremiah had foretold, in a few days, the Babylonian army attacked the city of Jerusalem. The Babylonian army pulled down the walls of Jerusalem. And they set fire to the palace and the temples. Everything happened like how Jeremiah had prophesied. They looted the town and took all their valuables. Thousands of people were enslaved and taken to Babylon. They killed King Zedekiah, the ministers, and all the priests as well. And one day... Jeremiah, I punished those who broke my covenant. The days are coming when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel. I will write my law in their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Jeremiah was destined to live in utter loneliness. He was always made fun of, and he was ill-treated everywhere. He lived long enough to witness the disasters he had predicted, but after his death, people realized that he spoke the truth, and that made them repent and return to God. Oh, it's such a sad story. Hmm, I know. But as they say, God works in mysterious ways. Hey, look at him! Looks like he was listening your story too. Ha ha ha! Were you listening to my story, you cutie? Hey, what are we gonna call him? Hmm. 
He he growls a lot. Let's call him lion. No, no. Let's call him tiger. Ha ha! Tiger. That's a nice name. I like it too. All right. It's time for the questions. Yes, father. Hmm. Now, Matthew, answer this. Where was Jeremiah born? Anathoth. Jeremiah was born in the village of Anathoth. Very good, Matthew. Now, who can answer this? What was the first vision that God showed Jeremiah? God showed him a vision of an almond tree covered with white flowers and a cooking pot. And George, what did he mean by these visions? In his vision, like the white flowers in the almond tree that was awake while everything else was dead, God said that He would fulfill every one of His words. And what about the cooking pot? God showed him that, like the cooking pot tilting from the north, Israel was waiting to be attacked from the north. Very good, George. That's all for today. Now go home and take care of our new member. Here you go. Thank you, Father. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father.